Hello, welcome back. I'm delighted to be joined by Heidi Allen. Last time she was on the programme, uh, Heidi, you were changing the face of British politics. You'd left the Tory party, Chucker and a few Labour MPs had left the Labour party and you were all setting up this... Uh, you were originally called the TIGs, the independent group, right. and then you became Change UK and... Back to independent again. And... and, and so what's happened? So you're, you, so Change UK, I think, still exists. Is that Correct. right? Yes. But you decided earlier this week that you would quit as leader. Why? So essentially, I mean, I left the Tory party because I wanted to do politics differently. Mm. And I was tired of my party putting its own self-interests ahead of the national interest. I was absolutely tired of that, and I mm -hmm. wanted to help create something that behaved differently. But as we rushed to become a party, because the polling suggested we were doing well, we needed to fight those EU elections, it became clear during the course of that campaign that those priorities perhaps weren't shared. And so long as I'm an MP, I'm un uncompromising. Country first, always over party. OK, so g give us an example of how your priorities were not shared by your colleagues. So the, the, the fact that everybody is aware of now is this issue around tactical voting. Because, of course, when we formed as a party, we had no idea what the local election results would be. And the Lib Dems did incredibly well in that. And that transformed the landscape. And suddenly they were riding high in the polls and Change UK weren't. And at that point, all the polling suggested that, you know, if our objective was to get as many Remain MEPs elected around the country, that people should be voting perhaps for the Greens in some areas and Lib Dems in others. And, and that wasn't a shared and, and, and so just shared. to be clear, your view, therefore, was you should not field candidates in areas where there was a sympathetic Green or a sympathetic Lib Dem, and you made that case and you lost. Well, I mean, by that point, you couldn't stand candidates down. It was too late to do that. But you could, of course, suggest to the public that they should tactically vote, and that was what I was arguing for, and I lost, yes. And... and um, so, as a result, essentially, of, of losing that argument, you just thought, these are not people I can work with? No, it, it's more... As with all these things, it's more complicated, that. But in essence, you know, if you've left one party because you're determined to put the country first, I'm not about to compromise on that and accept another party that, you know, despite all good intentions, is still behaving in the old ways of thinking it's about that party triumphing rather than what the country needs. And, I, you know, I feel going back to being independents, given the, the flux that we're in, I think, in the political landscape we're better positioned to um, attract other moderates to come and work with us that want to protect the country, both from left and right extremism. And I suppose two questions. One is, for the time being, those of you, so your other former Tory colleague, Sarah Williston, has also left. That's Jeffrey right. Munna has That's left. Exactly. Are you going to work together? That, that's right, yes. Yeah. So we will sit again as a, as a group of independents, as we did before. Um, so most, it's TIG reborn. It is TIG reborn, um, back, from the, back from the ashes. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, the Party of Change UK was formed for the entire purpose of fighting those EU elections, right. and, of course, that has passed. So we'll go back as we were before, um, and, you know, we will work, I'm sure, alongside the Greens and the Lib Dems and any moderate colleagues. Now, you're going to work alongside them. Um, lots of people believe you're going to join the Lib Dems. Yeah, and that, that's certainly not my intention. I understand why people might think that and, you know, to put on record, the Lib Dems have been nothing other than very courteous and generous in that and for that, I'm, I'm saying. But you have no grateful. plan. You personally have no, no plan to join. But, and and, and, and what, could anything change your mind? Might you want to join the Lib Dems at some point? I just, I, I honestly don't think so. Right. You know, never say never in this game because it, they are shifting sounds, but genuinely, as I sit here today, no. Because, you know, right here and now, the near and present danger is a no-deal Brexit and Farage finding his way through the Brexit party into holding control with the Tory party. That absolutely terrifies me. So here and now, I think the best thing we can do is be a centre ground, almost um, a diplomatic convener, if you like, in the heart of Parliament, saying to other moderately-minded colleagues, whether the Green Tories that might break away if Boris becomes leader, um, Labour colleagues that might break away if they cannot persuade Jeremy Corbyn to back a second referendum. And I think they're more likely to come to a safe centre ground. It's foolish, I think, to think that people will necessarily jump into the Lib Dems or Interchange UK. It's a big decision for people to leave their party and immediately jump sure. into another. So I, th I think, you know... It I'm sure to ask Theresa, I mean, you, you two are sort of somewhat divided on the biggest issue of the day, i.e. Brexit, but do you want to try and persuade Heidi to rejoin your party? Well, Heidi, you'd obviously be really welcome back. As I was saying before, we, we're always a, a party which embraces diverse views. Um, we all enjoyed working with you. Um, I hope you will consider coming back. Brexit does divide us, but um, I think we can ultimately find... So what about it? Could you see yourself this being... This is like Silla Black. This is, <laughs> this is like a loving. It wasn't quite what I was expecting to be asked. No. Um, 
honestly, no. Right. You know, if I thought the Tory party could be back to the One Nation Tory party mm. that it was that I joined, then I wouldn't have left in the first place. But you've got a lot in common with Peter. You want to persuade him? And that's the Labour point, party? isn't it? Come on, Peter. <laughs> Your turn. No, I mean, I'm listening with real uh, empathy for, for, for what I'm hearing because uh, what people don't realise when they look on at politics, actually, is what Heidi did and all the others was brave. Leaving a political party is an incredibly brave thing to do. Uh, I've watched from a distance uh, what you've done and the decisions you've taken, and I'm listening and learning. What was the uh, biggest... But we, we, do share a, we do share a common cause on the Brexit issue, the biggest issue of the day. Do, do you think you shouldn't have fought, looking back on it, uh, the European parliamentary elections? Was it simply a mistake? D did you go too fast? Um, I think, yes. Um, if we had a time again, I suspect, honestly, we probably would have made the same decision because it was, you know, the biggest decision facing us. And at that point, our polling was good. Every, mm. The appetite was there. So, you know, in politics, you deal with the facts as they are. But for me, the facts have changed. They, they lay, um, the low collection results transformed everything. Mm. And I want to react to that. And my, the thing I come back to, why am I in politics? Why did I leave running my business? Country first, country first. And on that, I'm not prepared to waver. So my reasons for joining, leaving the Tory party are exactly the same as they are today. Uh, um, how do you answer, and we haven't got long, I mean, Nigel Farage's party has done spectacularly mm. well. What has he done right that you did wrong? I think, you know, he, don't forget for Nigel Farage, of course, it was his second time around. He'd done this before with the UKIP party, and it is, you know, UKIP version two, if you like. So it's a well-oiled machine. But, you know, it does prove the point. To start from absolutely nothing is incredibly difficult, which is why I think... Unfortunately, I've got to wind you up. It's very sad. That's it in the coming days.